This video is the fourth in a series on Adrena-based cars that I've built over the last few weeks. In the third video, the car was using a 6050 MPU to allow it to balance on two wheels. This time, we'll build on that process by looking at three changes that have been made since then. First, what you see here is that same car fitted with a pair of N20 gear motors that can readily be found on eBay. Here's a quick preview of the car running on the N20 wheel set. Later, we'll take a closer look at them, but first I want to take you through a speeded up version of the mechanics in changing over from one wheel set to the other. In this case, we're going from the N20s back to the yellow drive set used in the earlier videos. In real time, this takes about 10 minutes. Here we see it in less than one. The real takeaway in this clip is that they are interchangeable and it gives a simple way to compare the performance of the two wheel sets. Now that that's complete, let's take a closer look at the original wheels in action. And while we watch, I'll go over the second change made to this version of the car. To do that, let's review how the earlier version worked. Basically, in the balance department, there are two separate PID routines that translate pitch and yaw changes derived from the MPU into values that can be summed together and ultimately be used as H-bridge PWM signals. That by itself worked well enough to balance the car, but in that version it would pretty quickly wander off in one direction or the other. To prove it, go back and watch the previous video and note how often the car was picked up and set back into frame. This was due mainly to using a fixed balance point that was never quite correct plus running the car on a surface that wasn't perfectly level. To counteract that issue, I added a routine that would continuously recalculate the car's balance point. It does this by assuming that if the set point isn't correct, the car's motors will run more in one direction than the other. So basically, after 30 pitch PID operations have transpired, the new routine finds the average of its contribution to the speed signal and then from that generates a correction to the balance set point. Additionally, this average gets added to what I think of as an all-time running error. That also contributes to the balance point setting. The idea here being that if the car hasn't moved at all, then the sum found in this bucket would be zero. If, on the other hand, it's moved either forward or backward, then the, this error bucket would have a non-zero value and that value is fairly proportional to the net distance traveled by the car. For sure, this won't have the accuracy of a digital wheel encoders, but it doesn't require any additional hardware, which particularly for the N20 wheels would be hard to do. And if done correctly, surely will be better than no compensation at all. While describing how the new auto balance point and precision compensation code works, the video has moved on to showing that same functionality using the N20 wheel set. The code is the same for both wheel sets, only the PID constants have been changed. For the lower powered, slower turning N20 wheels, these constants are larger. Now, let's have a look topside and see what's going on with the display, which is the third change in the car. I apologize for the jerky camera holding, as I know it makes it hard to watch, and I'll ask you to trust me that in real life this display is much easier to read than it appears here. Basically, while the car is in motion, the display shows four pieces of data. The first, label SPD, or speed, is the last 30 cycle PWM average. It's an integer and has a theoretical range of plus or minus zero to 255. To its right is the ERR, or error reading, which I previously referred to as the all-time running error. It can be any integer value, but remember zero is considered to be ideal. On the bottom row is the BPT balance point reading, 
like all the other readings, is shown as an integer, but should be interpreted as a decimal value of degrees out to the hundredth position. It's the set point that the pitch PID would see as needing zero correction. And finally, to its right is the Y or yaw reading in degrees. It's updated once per second while the other three are updated every three quarters of a second. The other thing about this car's display that needs pointing out is that in the previous versions of the car, the LCD 4-bit mod library was used. This was driven mostly by my having selected a SanSmart display and then looking to their website for examples of how to use it. But because PID refresh rates are critical to making a car like this work, I quickly learned that updating the display was getting in the way. Depending on which character positions were involved, it would take anywhere from 25 to 125 milliseconds to do it. I googled for solutions, but couldn't find that anybody had found issues with this. So, it was mostly by accident that I found that using the Liquid Crystal library alone yielded 4 millisecond processing times, irrespective of which portion of the display was being updated. From the perspective of using the display, this was a major find. As shown in these clips, the car has been running in what I call the figure 8 mode, which is a carryover designation from the original car that started this series. But what's happening in this case is concurrent with the all display update, and if the car's all time error reading is within 30, meaning it's close to its home position, it will either advance or retard the yaw setting by 15 degrees. It will do so until it reaches a maximum of plus 180 degrees. If it's retarding the heading, it does that until it hits minus 180. So, in an ideal setting, the car would rotate clockwise for 360 degrees, then reverse itself, and then rotate counterclockwise until pointing the same way, at the rate of 15 degrees per second. In reality, because it's often not within 30 units of home, the effective spin rate is considerably slower but I think it does demonstrate that the car's heading can be controlled while at the same time maintaining its balance. Finally, you might ask, which wheel set makes the better balance bot? Clearly both are usable. Personally, from an aesthetics point of view, I lean toward the N20s and they consume probably a third of the power, so batteries last longer. But they're not near as powerful as the cheaper yellow set and I think take more finesse to fit to a car. Their having an open frame can be viewed as both a plus or a negative. Plus if you like to see moving parts, but negative if dirt or lint might be a factor. The yellow plastic motors are easier to mount and can be had for probably half the cost or even less when you add in wheels and other related mounting hardware. The yellow set will allow you to run the car over a wider range of terrain. So I think it's really a toss-up and should be your call as to which is best. Well, that's all for now, and as always, good luck with your next project.